Hello all, for prelims 2023, I am coming up with a series called as Yuddha Bias. In the Yuddha Bias, daily 5-5 topics I am discussing, those are most expected topics. So already I discussed the topics up to 55. So this is the Yuddha Bias, exercise before the final war, Yuddha Bias, prelims point of view. First initially I did 20, then I increased up to 50, then I am going up to 100. So, this all together PDF will be provided to you within 3-4 days. So, 100 most expected topics in this, I am believing that 3 to 4 questions will come. 3 to 4 questions means 3 crore to 4 crore rupees, that much valid. So, please, most worked out questions these are, don't neglect it. And today, I am going to discuss from 56 to 50, 60, journal councils. Why it is in the news? Tamil Nadu Chief Minister M.K. Stalin had told that why we are not regularly conducting zonal councils. For every three, for every one year, compulsory we have to conduct three or four times zonal councils. He had asked in the newspaper in the, with the media. He had appealed to the central government to conduct the zonal councils regularly. On this lines, I am discussing about the zonal council. The zonal councils will be headed by Home Minister and it is formed by the act called as Reorganization Act of 1956. There are five zonal councils are there. Those five zonal councils are North, South, East, West and Central. And one more zonal council was been constituted later which is called as Northeastern State Zonal Council. So, overall six zonal councils are there in right now. Six zonal councils are there. The Union Home Minister is the chairman and the Vice Chairman will be the Chief Minister of the State on rotation basis for every zonal council. What they will be discussing? They will be discussing about interstate council, interstate coordination, finance, trade, governance related issues, the issues where the central government is targeted or the issues where the state government is targeted. These all issues will be discussed in the zonal councils and the zonal councils and interstate councils both are the symbols of federal features of the country. Hence, the zonal council is in the news. Zonal council is in the news and it is not a constitutional body, it is a statutory body which is constituted by the act called the States Reorganization Act of 1956. And in northeastern states, the country, the states which are there are Assam, Arunachal Pradesh, Manipur, Tripura, Mizoram, Meghalaya, Nagaland are not included in the zonal councils, but later they are included by the northeastern council. One more act was been formed by that the sixth zonal council came into existence. Number two, 57th, Kampa, which is called as Compensatory Afforestation Fund Management and Planning Authority. Compensatory Afforestation Fund Management and Planning Authority according to this COMPA, which is established in 2004 under Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, the constituted the Compensatory Afforestation Fund Management and Planning Authority to oversee and manage Compensatory Afforestation Fund as directed by the Supreme Court. So, one fund will be constituted. What is this fund? The fund is any industry or any firm because of their industry, if there is impact on environment, if there is an impact on environment or because of establishment of an industry or a mining company, when they are going for deforestation, when they are removing the forest, the equal amount of amount need to be deposited with the government, that particular fund is called as Kampa fund and that money will be used for environment related activities, that money will be used for forest afforestation related things, that is called as Kampa fund. It is a statutory body. The fund are meant to promote afforestation and regeneration activities as a way of compensating to for forest land diverted to non-forest use. So, forest land which is diverted, the forest land which is diverted to industry, now for that compensation they have to make a fund and that fund will be used again for afforestation in some other place that is called as Kampa fund. Kampa fund establishment in 2004. E-rupee, we know physical rupee which we had that is called as currency. Now, we are having electronic rupee on similar lines with cryptocurrency. But this e-rupee is a digital rupee, but it is not like a crypto, it is an idea of cryptocurrency, but not like a cryptocurrency. Means what? It is an, a sovereign rupee, which is guaranteed by the RBI, which is having a legal backing from the RBI, Central Bank of India. It is a part of monetary policy of the country. So, e-rupee is a legal tender, but which is in digital mode is called as e-rupee. E-rupee is also in the news. Delegated legislation. What is delegated legislation? The Supreme Court, when monetization happened in 2016, a case was been filed that 
So, central government is giving lot of powers. Central government is delegating lot of things to its officers. So, the delegated legislation should be holistic or delegated legislation should be limited. Then the Supreme Court of India had gave the judgment that delegation, le delegated legislation is an important part of the governance. Only the skeleton law will be made by the parliament. Only skeleton law will be made by the parliament and removing muzzle and blood and everything, each and every aspect will be provided by the executive. And that executive will be having the cells by the name called as civil servants. This executive will be delegating to the executive for the sake of implementation. So, hence delegated legislation is an important part of governance which is reiterated by the Gover Supreme Court of India. Delegated legislation is a part of, means parliament will be delegating the powers to the executive. Just they will made a, com a body, a skeleton type of body and remaining things will be provided by the executive. That particular process is called as delegated legislation. Y20 summit, youth 20 summit, minister for youth affairs and sports Anurag Thakur launched the theme of 20 summit, youth 20 summit. Youth 20 summit is to be held in India on the sidelines of G20 summit. It will focus on themes of future of work, means what type of work, digital work, climate change, disaster risk reduction, peace building and reconciliation and youth in democracy. About this, this particular Y20 summit, youth 20 summit, which is going to conduct in Delhi, this particular meeting is going to happen and this particular meeting is going to be held at Gohati and the original G20 summit will be happening in New Delhi. This youth 20 summit will be happening in Gohati. It will focus on global youth leadership and partnership. Global youth leaderships and partnership. This Y20 summit will be held in Guwahati. Original G20 summit 2023 India is the presidency. And there is a theme called as Vasudeva Kutumbakam. One earth, one family, one future, which is taken from Maha Upanishad. So, Vasudeva Kutumbakam is the theme of G20 presidency 2023 which is India and the summit will be held at New Delhi. On the same lines Y20 which is Youth 20 summit will be held at Guwahati. With this the five topics of today's most important topics will be completed. The tomorrow I will be coming with another five topics. Thank you. Jai Hind.